This is part 80 of C# -sharp tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss some useful methods of list collection class. This is continuation to part 79, so please watch part 79 before proceeding with this video. In this video, we'll be discussing these three functions true for all, as read only, trim access. Let's look at true for all. This method returns true or false depending on whether if every element within the list matches the conditions that are defined by the specified predicate. Let's understand this with an example. We'll be using this customer class that we have been working with in the previous sessions. And within the main method, we are creating an instance, I mean three instances of this customer class. Customer1, Customer2 and Customer3. And then here we have a list of customers. And then to that list, we are adding the three customer objects. Okay, now let's look at using this true for all method. Now let's say I want to check if all the customer objects within the list have got a salary of 5,000. How do we normally do that? We loop through each customer object and then check their salary. But instead of that, we can use this true for all function and then specify our condition here. So true for all. Let's pass the predicate x such that x dot salary greater than 5000. And if you look at this true for all method, what is it returning? It's returning a Boolean, true or false. Okay, so if all the objects within that list matches that condition, this method returns true, otherwise, it returns false. So let's actually print the message console dot write line are all. salaries greater than 5,000 alright so let's go ahead and run this and if you look at the customer objects that we have here this customer one object has got a salary less than 5,000 so not all objects meeting that condition so it's false on the other hand, if we say are all salaries greater than 3000 and then let's change this condition to 3000. So are all these customer objects having salary greater than 3000? That's true. So let's go ahead and run this now. True for all should return true. Okay, so very handy method in case if you want to check if all the elements of a collection matches your conditions. All right. Another useful function is this as read only. So this function returns a read only wrapper for the current collection. Now we use this method if we don't want the client code to modify the collection. That is, we don't want the client code to add or remove any elements from that collection. So the read only collection will not have methods to add or remove items from the collection. You can only read items from this collection. Let's understand this with an example. At the moment, if you look at this list of customers, okay, so this collection has got add method. So basically, you can use this method and add a customer object. Similarly, if you want to remove a customer object, there are several ways you can use remove, remove all, remove at, etc. So basically, this collection is allowing you to modify the collection. That is, you can add and remove elements. Okay, but then let's say our requirement is such that we are going to pass a collection object to you know some of the client application and that we don't want that application to be modifying our collection. If that's your requirement, then you can use this as a read only method on this collection. And if you look at what this method is returning, it is returning a read only collection object. Okay, so look at that read only collection of customer. Okay. And if this read-only collection class is present in system dot object uh, collections dot object model namespace, so make sure you have included that namespace. And so, what are we getting back? We are only we are getting a read-only collection of customer, and maybe let's call this read-only customers equals that. And if you look at this collection. Look at that, I don't have add method. Similarly, I don't have remove or remove all, any of those methods which allows um, you know to add or remove elements from the collection. Okay, but then you can retrieve the items from the collection using the index. Look at that, I can pass an index and uh, 
look at what it's returning it's returning a customer object back okay again if you look at the implementation of this indexer it has got only the get accessor meaning you can only retrieve an item from this collection but you cannot set an item meaning you cannot replace an existing item within that collection okay but then you can retrieve the items definitely similarly if you want to get the count you can use the count property so let's say we want to print the total uh, count of items within the collection we can simply say items equals whatever is the count let's see if we get that you know the read only collection should also have three elements within that look at that we get that three elements all right so very useful function the other method that we'll discuss is trim access so what is this method going to do it's going to set the capacity to the actual number of elements in the list if that number is less than a threshold value so basically if you look at this list when we have created this list we have used a constructor um, you know where we have set the initial capacity to 4 but let's set the initial capacity to 100 so at the moment we have set the capacity of this list to 100 but how many elements do we have within the list we have only three elements now let's go ahead and print the capacity and to print the capacity list customers dot capacity property will give us the capacity of that list let's go ahead and print that using console dot write line and let's say capacity before trimming that is before invoking the trim access function okay so let's go ahead and run this now and look at the capacity so what's capacity capacity is 100 at the moment okay now let's invoke trim access function and what is this method going to do it's going to set the capacity to the actual number of elements how many actual number of elements do we have within the list three so it's going to set the capacity to that number after we invoke this function so capacity after trimming let's run this look at that capacity before trimming is 100 but capacity after trimming is 3 so what is the advantage of invoking this method this method can be used to minimize a collections memory overhead if we know that we are not going to add new elements to that collection and the but then one thing that we have to keep in mind is the cost of reallocating and copying a large list can be considerable so basically what is this trim access function doing here here we have set the capacity to 100 while we have only three elements within the list okay so when we invoke the trim access what it has done is it has reallocated and copied all those elements okay so that now the list capacity is only three okay so this can improve the performance of our application a bit but then if I have 100 I mean if we have set the capacity to 100 and if we already have 90 elements and then when we invoke trim access and if it has to do that reallocation again then that process will be much expensive than the performance gain that we get that's why the threshold value at the moment according to MSDN is 90 percent so if the list has you know the capacity of 90 percent already full then invoking trim access is going to do nothing okay so that's something that has to be kept in mind but the threshold of 90 percent can change in the future alright that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day